Hello everyone. Welcome to the Solidity Fundamentals course. I am Anjali, a smart contract engineer and a blockchain trainer and I will be your guide for this course. Now today's video is going to be an introductory video where we look at some important points for the course and have a look at the basic course structure. I am very excited to be a part of your Web3 journey, seeing you become masters in Solidity. So let's get started. Before ushering into the intricacies of Solidity, let us navigate through some important points for the course. This is important as it will help you in understanding the importance of this course and how it is going to prove an important milestone in your Web3 journey. First point, who can take this course? This course is for everyone, whether you are a beginner, mesmerized by the idea of Web3, willing to learn stuff and looking for resources or someone with intermediate skills and solidity looking to brush the basics concepts again or maybe deep diving into it. Even if you are at an advanced level in solidity, I guarantee that you'll have a lot of things to learn from this course as this course will keep up with the latest developments happening in the solidity space. What are the prerequisites for the course? There is only one and that is knowing at least one programming language beforehand. So it's not a mandatory requirement, but being a programmer myself, I do not recommend Solidity being your first ever programming language, since there are a lot of nuances to the language which is difficult to comprehend for a non-programmer. So knowing at least one object-oriented language is definitely a plus. The last point, why should you even learn Solidity? Right now, the blockchain technology is gaining huge traction due to the benefits and the ethics it is bringing with itself. But it is still at a very early stage, which brings with itself an opportunity window for all those who venture into this space at this time. In short, the demand for blockchain devs, especially skilled in solidity, is much more than the supply. The average salary of a blockchain engineer is above 100k dollars, which speaks volumes about the growth and opportunities in this field. So congratulations for taking the first step in this direction. Now let's have a look at the course structure. We will dig begin by discussing the basics of blockchain technology. What exactly is blockchain technology? What are the different types? What is the underlying infrastructure? The benefits of blockchain technology over the other web2 technologies. Then we will move on to discussing the solidity language. What are the important features of solidity language? Why do we call solidity as a language for smart contracts? What exactly are smart contracts? How are smart contracts used to build decentralized applications which are different from the centralized ones? Then in the next lecture, we'll be discussing about the different wallets present in the Web3 space and the installation steps for them. Then we will be ready to write a first Solidity program. We will be using the Remix IDE for writing our Solidity code. Right from writing the code to deploying it and verifying the results, we'll be looking at the whole concept. Moving on, we'll be discussing about the complete compilation process of a Solidity program. For example, in Java, we have the programs running on an environment called as the JVM. In Solidity, we have something known as the EVM. So we'll be looking at this concept a little in detail. Then we will be discussing about the transactions happening on the blockchain. So we'll be reading transactions, writing on them, and we will also be discussing about blockchain explorers, which are the tools for reading these transactions. Moving on to our next section, we will be discussing about the concept of variables in Solidity language. So we'll be discussing about local variables, state variables, how the two different from each other. We'll also be talking about global variables. So like all other languages, Solidity also has its own set of global variables. Then we will be looking in detail about the data types. It will take us multiple videos to discuss all the data types present in the Solidity language from signed and unsigned integers to booleans to strings, everything. Then we will be discussing about the different operators which can be used in this language. Also, there is a very important concept of overflow in Solidity and we are going to look at that. So after discussing about the variables and the data types in Solidity, we will be discussing in detail about some user-defined data types. So we'll be discussing about arrays, structs, enums, mapping. Now, in all other languages, we see 
arrays being used, trucks being used, enums being used. But mapping is a feature which is specific to the solidity language and it's a very important data type to be used in this language. So we'll be discussing about mapping in detail. We'll also look at the concept of memory and storage in blockchain and using the solidity language. So that was it for the course structure. I have tried to make this course a very comprehensive solidity guide for you to help you become an expert in writing smart contracts. The code for all the practical applications discussed in this course would be shared on the Ben platform for your reference. We are going to keep this course more hands-on than theory and try to learn things through implementation. I hope you all derive maximum benefits from this course. So let's get started.